if we take a step back from, let's say, the predicates of Dr. Alexander, we can divide models of learning into two large groups. One are stage models, and the other one are balanced models. First, we'll look at stage models, and perhaps the best example of these are, let's say, the Piaget series of uh, development from sensory and motor skills to formal operational skills. Most educators are familiar with Jean Piaget, but basically what it is is that we have a motion, let's say a set of stages going from sensory motor, and we go in a very predetermined order to pre-operational, concrete operational, and finally former operational skills. But what's really going on here is a set of stages. And we can think of this as a path that goes from simple and concrete at one end to let's say complex and abstract at the other. And really what this is, is looking at it as a path. We're looking at stages and people and students might find themselves different stages on this path, although most students might complete this path by the middle school years. So this is one way of looking at learning, and many, let's say, examples of learning use this framework. But there's another way to look at it. You might think of these as balanced models of learning that look at, let's say, more not so much as the mind developing, but the mind is having different elements that are kept in balance, and people have different strengths and weaknesses, and it's a process of, let's say, balancing those out. But perhaps the first one is a standard id, ego, superego model that came to us from Sigmund Freud. In this model, the ego, or the self, is always balancing out the rational demands that come from the superego. They give a set of principles about how we're supposed to act. In many ways, it's basically our conscience telling us what is right and wrong. In many senses, this is the teacher in our personality, balanced with, let's say, the more intuitive and let's say the more, let's say, innovative, creative id, which is a series of impulses, but also desires, drives, and demands. And we can think of learning as trying to balance out these two things. Just as before, the student the teacher talking, you could think of the id talking to the superego and moderated by the ego. Perhaps a more familiar one is Gardner's, let's say, multiple intelligences. And I will not give too much of a description here, but basically students have different intelligences, and they can be strong and weak in different areas. So rather than just think of intelligence as one scale, we can think of it as multidimensional. However, we can also think of different learning styles, and therefore we might have the same content, but we might have different learners, and we teach those learners in different ways. For example, for a visual learner, you might want to show them the content. For an auditory learner, you might want to tell them, and they might learn better in that way. And finally, if you have a tactile learner, they might want to actually do something, use their hands, and therefore approach the content in the same way. These are all three different ways to approach the same material. 